Pedro. ये कहा करेंगे चंदा मामा बस एक टूर के हैं The world watched to know as India made history Chandrayaan 3 accomplished what no other space mission has done before landed on the moon's south pole and India will always remember this day thanks to the brilliant minds and tireless efforts of our true space heroes our isro scientists every indian is proud to have achieved and lived this great moment today uh, before we go to our special guest uh, who is pavan goenka chairperson of inspace joining us exclusively i just want to play out for you some of the uh, statements made by prime minister modi uh, the isro chairman and others jab hum apni aankhon ke samne aisa itihas bante hue dekhte hain तो जीवन धन्य हो जाता है ऐसी ऐतिहासिक घटनाएं राष्ट्र जीवन की चिरंजीव चेतना बन जाती है ये पल अविस्मरणीय है ये क्षण अभूतपूर्व है ये क्षण विकसित भारत के संखनाद का है ये क्षण नए भारत के जयघोष का है आई थिंक इट्स ऑल क्लियर टू यू आई डोंट हैव टू टेल से वेन वेन इट इज सच ए टफ जर्नी फॉर गोइंग टू मून एंड लैंडिंग सॉफ्ट लैंडिंग विच इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर एनी नेशन to achieve today even with the advancement of technology and we achieving it in just two two missions the first mission had a narrow miss and now we achieved it so perfectly it gives confidence to configure missions to going not only going to moon going to mars sometimes land on the mars maybe in the future going to venus and other planets and and also sometimes go beyond uh, uh, asteroids and others we should think about it i think you should all support us to plan such missions with a very very cost effective mission nobody in the world can ever do like this what we do and nobody will be able to succeed maybe in the minimum most attempts so i request each one of your support encouragement the whole of the nation should be behind us to do this and uh, to speak more on this i'm joined uh, now by pavan goenka chairperson of in space who was there in the command center watching all the excitement mr goenka congratulations to you uh i you know i'm just wondering here in the newsroom we were all cheering there were goosebumps the feeling must have just been magical right there i just cannot describe it it is uh, i cannot say it in words you have to be here to get that feeling and i can tell you that i have perhaps never felt like this in my life where the <laughs> the goosebumps were understatement uh, and my my heart was in my mouth at the last few seconds were happening uh, and praying and uh, Though I had full confidence in our so scientists, they still pray and that everything goes well in the last few seconds. Um, to all of us watching, as we were seeing the countdown and the distance reducing, uh, we probably have no idea how critical the last few minutes were and how much could have gone wrong. Uh, can you explain to us why this was such a historical and perfectly successful maneuver that was done? well as uh, has been talked about uh, by various uh, people uh, the last 20 minutes uh, which is the t minus 22 actual landing was the most critical time because that's where the speed was reduced from uh, something like 1.4 km per second to about 350 m per second one third and the distance was coming down and the orientation was changing so you can just imagine the descending speed coming down going to some changing and finding the absolute right spot to land because if you land uh, in a in an accelerator and uh, and the lander is tilted then it will not be able to to sustain so so many things have to go perfectly right in those last 20 minutes for it to work and the way the whole thing went it seemed like a nice side play uh, because everything just happened 
uh, and there was no there was no nothing that had to be kind of uh, any kind of uh, excitement or anxiety getting created in those 20 minutes i would i would think that uh, this was uh, an amazing uh, amazing last 20 minutes uh, that i have witnessed in terms of how well planned the mission was as you know that there was no control <clears throat> once the uh, lander went into the ALS mode. There was no control from the control center. Uh, they just had to watch, and everything was pre-programmed. Uh, and and that's what makes it makes it more difficult because you cannot react to anything going wrong. Uh, if something went wrong, there's no control. Uh, and and this is where we had fallen short last time in Chandrayaan two, uh, with everything else going right up to this point. And that's what made this moment so much more exciting. And many of the people who were in that room, but it was there four years ago also. And for them to see those last minutes not repeating on what happened four years ago must have been a great way of life. I see everybody rushing right now. So most likely the lander door that was waiting for. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so has 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 that happened? Has uh, Pragyan? Uh... I am standing. I am standing outside. Everybody uh, started applauding and ran inside. Uh, so it must be that the lander door had just opened. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait, and we'll check for that update. We're of course uh, live with Dr. Goenka right now. Uh, very, very exciting. So, so explain to us now what happens next, because everyone is excited, everyone's cheering, but perhaps uh, people have not understood how big a deal this is. So now that Vikram lander has reached the dark side of the moon, this uh, soft landing has happened. The Pragyan rover comes, and then what happens, sir? You see, first of all, let me say that even though this was the most difficult part uh, of the whole mission in terms of the lander landing uh, with a soft landing, and in fact, the landing was softer than soft uh, because the speed was very, very low. Uh, but this is where actual mission starts in some sense because now with the door to Sandrayan of the, of the lander have opened, uh, the rover will come out. Once the rover comes out, only after that, uh, when they start, start inserting pictures, from the rover and from the lander, and they start looking at what the terrain is. Can they plan how the rover is going to move uh, inside the on the on the moon surface? So it does not come on any obstacle. It will collect uh, uh, sort of images of the soil, uh, which will then be sent back to Earth control, uh, and they will then determine the uh, the various chemical composition, the various composition of the soil. And that's what is going to give the more information about the southern part of the moon, which adds to the scientific knowledge. So the next 12, 13 days, which is one moon day, uh, is when the data is getting collected. And this is the heart of the mission in the sense that this is where the, uh, the value of the mission starts getting captured. Up to now, what we have done is we have gotten where we need to get to. Now what we will do is start getting the value of getting there. <clears throat> uh, and, and I'm going to ask very, very simple uh, questions here. Why is it important for us to know the mineral composition, the you know, uh, the thermal composition of the atmosphere of the moon? Why do we want to know all of this? Why do we want these samples? Yeah. So if there is one planet where uh, scientists see possibility of uh, uh, of life, of of being able to live in future, uh, it is moon. Uh, and uh, therefore, if we have to think about making moon a home. If you have to think about leveraging the uh, assets of the moon uh, in terms of mineral resources, in terms of water, ice, whatever it may be, uh, we need to understand more and more about the moon. Now, today, of course, the moon mission is very expensive. Uh, even $90 million, a lot of money to be spent for a single trip to moon. Uh, but with all the information, all the knowledge that we will gather, and again, I'm speaking in a very simplistic manner, all the information knowledge that we're gathering will help us to decide whether we can really leverage what moon has to offer to us and as you know, our prime minister said jokingly Mama Durke will become Sanda Mama Turke and that's what we are looking forward to and to get to that Turke we have to understand moon very well we have to make it a routine that one can just sit in a car so to say and just drive to moon and come back I mean it's just and that requires a lot of knowledge it's just mind-boggling. It's just mind-boggling to even think of it today, <laughs> sitting here and talking about it. But would it be correct to say that what you're describing, uh, we have today achieved the first step? Uh, see, I would say that we have added to the steps already taken. Uh, in fact, in some sense, the, 
uh, overall expressions that the world had about the moon had slowed down. Uh, I remember way, way back when, uh, when first moon landing had happened, human landing, right? Uh, from there to now, not that much has happened uh, in, in this time period, right? So in a sense, there was a slowdown. But suddenly now we see again uh, interest coming back up with India landing, with Russia unfortunately failing, but Russia was going to land uh, with the US doing the Artemis program. So I think uh, the whole uh, scientific discovery of moon uh, will accelerate over the next few years. And that, that, that sort of uh, dream that we had, uh, that the Prime Minister talked about today, Chanda Mama Turke, that dream may happen sooner than we think. So would the next step be Gaganyaan, a manned mission well, to the moon? Yeah, so Gaganyaan is not a mission to the moon. Gaganyaan is, Gaganyaan is, in, is India's first effort to put a, a human in his space. Right? So it is not going to moon. Moon may be second or third step for India. But right now, the planning is only one in the space using uh, Indian technology, Indian spacecraft, Indian uh, uh, launch vehicle. So that will be the first step towards a human space flight for you. A lot of things were mentioned today um, briefly by Prime Minister Modi as well as the ISRO chairman about what next. And he spoke about possible uh, missions to Mars, Venus, asteroids ahead. There's going to be an Aditya mission uh, around the sun. Um, is uh, India really looking at dominating the space race, something which... You know, uh, traditionally, we believe that the U.S., Russia, perhaps China are at the forefront of. Where do we stand today? Well, uh, India has been among the top five or six countries uh, in terms of space technology. Uh, what we have done today perhaps has taken us a little bit further, a uh, little bit higher up in the, in the pecking order of a space technology. And let's be realistic. One mission does not uh, change the pecking order. Uh, we will have to have several such missions uh, over the next two years for us to move up that pecking order. And you're right that, that uh, U.S., Russia, and China are seen to be ahead of India right now in space technology and space achievements. But India certainly can do it. And there's no doubt about it. India can do it. Uh, we, have, we, have, we are getting good, business, good budget support, uh, not as much as these countries have, but it's good enough uh, for India. Uh, and with private sector beginning to invest in space, uh, it will, in, in a sense, uh, uh, sort of add to or supplement the budget that comes from the government. Uh, so uh, with the success of uh, Chandrayaan-3, I would think that ISRO will be able to get uh, uh, support, budgetary support for many more complex and more expensive missions than what Chandrayaan-3 Chandrayaan was. As you would have heard that Aditya-1, Aditya-L1 is the next mission that is being planned. And following that would be, <clears throat> hello, yes. uh, my battery is just about to run out, so it <laughs> might it might uh, go away anytime. <clears throat> so following Aditya is the, is the human space flight. And there are many more uh, missions that are currently under planning, but not yet approved missions. And those will be announced as the approval happens. I'm going to try and squeeze in one last question. Uh, and let's see if the battery lasts or not. We'll keep our fingers crossed. You spoke about private investment. And uh, this is something we want to understand uh, from you, that uh, how much interest is there and are private companies really participating in India at uh, the level they are, you know, in the United States, for example? Not do, yet. Not do we have our own yet. Elon Musk yet? Uh, not yet. Uh, see, we are, uh, I would say, 20 years. We are 20 years. Uh, I think SpaceX, if I remember right, was started in 2002. And we had our start, start in 2021. So we are 19, 20 years behind. Uh, but I don't think we will take 19, 20 years to catch up. Uh, the Indian private sector is uh, fairly aggressive uh, in, in, in the space, space sector, both the startups and the established players. Established players uh, who have been traditionally only vendors to show are now moving up the value chain, investing in technology and making larger investment in space. And the startups uh, are uh, right now taking baby steps, but uh, soon uh, they'll start taking giant steps also. Uh, so you have seen, uh, for example, the orbital uh, launch that we are waiting for from Skyroot. Same thing with Technical. Then we are seeing some satellites being made uh, and lots of things happening. So uh, I would say that our space startup uh, ecosystem is just about 
18 months old. Give it some time. If we talk five years from now, uh, we would not caught up yet, but we would have much closer to uh, US and the Western world. And 10, 15 years from now, uh, I would not be surprised if we catch up or move ahead. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a lucky day. Uh, the battery also lasted and we got through the conversation. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Pavan Goenka, for uh, joining you. us thank and you. giving us a sneak peek. I hope no, tonight is a night weekend. of celebration. Yes, I'm going to see if the, if the lander uh, door is open. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. All right. Pavan Goenka there, chairman of InSpace, speaking with us exclusively on what is truly an exciting red letter day for Indians across the world. And actually, the world is watching what has been achieved today. Let's just get you some voices of the celebrations. So, Chandrayaan 3 has landed and we are at the VIT Patna where you can see the energy, the josh within the students here. Everyone is clapping and shouting. Slogans are being raised of Bharat Mata Ki Jai. You can see the energy in the people. This is a time of pride for the country. Chandrayaan 3 has landed safely. All the students here, tears of pride are in the eyes of the students.